Check out how amazing this workflow is. All you need to do is provide a photo of a person and the clothing you want them to wear and it seamlessly applies it for you with incredible quality and flawless, seamless result. Previously, we could only achieve this by using a prompt to generate clothing and apply it to the subject we wanted. But now, we can choose the clothing ourselves. This marks a significant change. In the previous workflows, clothing was applied randomly and based on what the AI understood from our input which often resulted a random or unintended outcomes. However, now we can use a specific product such as one from our brand or something we found online and apply it directly to our subject. Amazing, okay? If you notice on social media, there's a site recently offering this service where through Hugging Face, you can upload an image and a piece of clothing. The output shows the clothing applied to the subject, but the quality isn't great. Moreover, there are limitations. You can only perform limited number of edits online, and doing more on other platforms would cost you extra, requiring you to recharge your account each time. With this workflow, however, you can easily apply clothing to any subject as many times as you want, without any quality loss. The results are so realistic that no one would suspect AI was involved. This feature is incredibly useful for online clothing businesses as it can save significant time and allow them to display their designs on various subjects seamlessly. They can then use these images for their website or social media page. I really appreciate if you like the video right now and subscribe the channel for my next fantastic tutorials. This workflow is comprehensive but straightforward. At the top, you will see two sections, one for uploading the subject's photo and the other for the clothing. The subject's photo can be a full body image, an upper body shot, a lower body shot, or even just a shoe allowing you to add something like sneakers to the subject's feet. For the subject and clothing, you can drag and drop the desired image into these two sections, like this. In the second part, Flux Models, you'll see several models loaded here, including Flux Fill, Dual Clips, Flux Redux, Clip Vision, VAE, and Flux LoRa Turbo 8 Step. I've included installation instructions and download links for these in the description, so I won't make the video longer by explaining them here. In this section, you can write your prompt, and the prompt should describe the final result. For example, if you want this person to wear a hoodie, you should specify the prompt what the final image should look like. For instance, a woman wearing a pink hoodie with pink pants that have text saying, Joker AI. I don't need to consider the subject's current outfit, jeans and t-shirt. Instead, I describe the final look in the prompt. For now, we don't need to focus on the section below. I explain it later. Moving on this section, you will find your key parameters like the seed, the number of steps, etc. Seed can be set to random or manually adjust. I've set the number of steps to 12 because I activate Flux Turbo LoRa 8 step here. If your Flux Turbo isn't active, you will need to set the number of steps at least 20 steps. But I highly recommend enabling Flux Turbo. It doesn't significantly affect quality but dramatically increases the speed up to 3 times faster and shortens the time required to generate an image. We don't need to adjust the other settings unless you want to experiment. The important feature here is auto masking. This allows the AI to automatically mask the areas we want changes applied and ensure the clothing is added only to those parts. However, in this case, we need to do the opposite. I will tell you what I mean. That means specify the areas where we don't want the AI to make any changes. In the first box, write what your subject is. For instance, it could be a woman, a man, or even a child. Since our subject here is a woman, I write woman. In the other boxes below, specify the parts of the subject you don't want the AI to modify. For instance, in the final result, you'll notice that the subject's face and hair remain unchanged. If you don't want the AI to modify the face, 
right face in first box. Similarly, if you don't want the hair altered, right hair. If you don't want the hands to change, right hand. It's important to note that each box accepts only one board. You cannot write multiple terms like face, hair, hand in a single box separated by commas, as the system cannot distinguish between them effectively. Instead, use separate boxes for each word. For example, in the first box, write face. In the second box, write hair. In the third box, write hand. If you want to exclude more areas from changes, you can active additional boxes. For instance, turn on the next box and write hat. Active another box and write arms. Like this. If you turn on more boxes, you need to ensure proper connections between the nodes. For example, if you are using up to mask 4 and decide to active mask 5, you need to connect the output of the pixel-wise node for mask 5 to the input of the grow mask node. If mask 5 is deactivated, connect previous one, mask 4's output directly to grow mask input to ensure functionality. Finally, if you want to deactivate any of the masks, simply turn off the corresponding box by this option. Then reconnect the last active mask to the grow mask node input. It's straightforward. Once you press start, the AI begins its process, identifying the masking the areas you specified. It first detects the subject based on your description. For example, if you've written woman, it identifies the person in the image and creates an initial mask for her. Then it masks the areas you don't want to be altered like the face, hair, or hands. In this case, it finds and masks the face, locates the hair, and masks it, and identifies the hands to mask them as well. While the detection may not always be perfect, the workflow adjusts itself to ensure accuracy. Afterward, the workflow takes the base mask of the subject and removes the parts you excluded, okay? Like the face, hair, and hands, to create a final mask. For example, it subtracts the face area from the mask, includes the hair, and also removes the hands. The remaining mask becomes the area where the modification will be applied, allowing the AI to overlay the clothing onto the subjects naturally and accurately. For instance, it applies a hoodie to the subject, recognizing and adapting to the subject's posture. Even according for details like the hoodies, the sleeves, or the subject's stance. The accuracy is incredible. This level of precision ensures the clothing fits perfectly, creating a natural look. If you notice the quality isn't as sharp as you'd like, or you want a more refined result, you can increase the resolution. In the lower section of the workflow, there's an option to adjust the image quality. In image scale node, you have an option called megapixels. This might be set to 0.5, but increasing it will enhance the output quality significantly. For example, setting it to 1.5 will give sharper details and richer colors. If you need even higher resolution, you can adjust it to 2 or 3. Keep in mind that higher values will result in larger image sizes and longer processing times, as the AI requires more time to work on the increased detail. If you're testing different quality levels, generating multiple outputs can help you find the best result. The AI adapts to various sharpness settings and color balance, ensuring flexibility for your specific needs. For resolution setting, a value of 0.7 is suitable for quick previews, while 1.5 delivers noticeably sharper details and improved colors. Setting it to 2 or 3 offers a high quality result, ideal for professional use. The quality of the input image also plays a crucial role in determining the final result. Better input quality naturally yield superior outputs.
If you notice that the AI sometimes struggles with masking certain areas like the subject's face, resulting in errors even when you specify that the face should not be altered. There's a solution for this. Often the auto mask feature can misidentify areas or accidentally include parts of the face in the mask, which can lead to unwanted changes. For example, as shown in the preview, even after explicitly instructing the AI to exclude the face, it may still distort the some parts of the face in some images. To resolve this, you can use workflow version 2, which provides a manual masking option. This workflow can be downloaded via the link provided in the description, but it's exclusively available for my Patreon supporters. In this update workflow, you have the flexibility to manually create masks for the areas you want to modify, ensuring accuracy and precision. Here's how it works. First, load your subject image and clothing image. Once both are loaded, disable the auto mask feature here by toggling this option off like this. This ensures the workflow doesn't attempt to create an automatic mask. Now run the workflow once by pressing Q prompt. This generates a preliminary mask for the subject. After it starts processing and you see the preview images, click the stop button to stop the process. Now right click on the preview of the generated mask and select copy image. Then select this node here, the load image node and press Ctrl plus V on your keyboard. Then right click on the mask image in the load image node and click open mask editor. Use the brush tool to precisely define the areas you want to modify, such as clothing regions. For example, if you want the AI to only modify the jacket and pants, carefully brush those areas. Include the sleeves and hands if necessary to maintain natural transition, especially when hands overlap clothing. Avoid brushing areas like the face to ensure no changes are applied there. Once your manual mask is complete, click save. The new mask will now be considered during the processing. And when you run the workflow again, the AI will only modify the specified areas. This approach prevents errors in sensitive areas like the face and allows for high quality results without unintended alterations. If you want even higher quality output, you can increase the megapixel settings in the workflow which I mentioned earlier. By raising this value, the resolution and sharpness of the final image improve significantly although processing time will also increase. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.